What does it mean to proclaim good news in the midst of tragedy? What does it mean to proclaim God's love in the midst of trauma? That's a question I've been asking myself in this Easter season. You'll remember from worship on Sunday, uh, during the assurance of God's grace, during the Easter season, we're interacting with the congregation. We're asking questions about where you have felt assurances of God's love in this time. Last Sunday, we asked questions. Uh, we asked these two questions. Where have you experienced God's love this week? What does good news look like right now in your life and in the world? And I've been thinking about those questions in the midst of this. It's really hard week. Uh, this hard week and which is in a series of lots of other hard weeks, a hard months, a hard year and years. But this week, it seems especially present, the heaviness, the lamentation. We've heard about the death and the murder of Dante Wright. Derek Chauvin's trial has moved to its defense. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been pulled. COVID cases are on the rise. What does it mean to proclaim good news in the midst of such trauma? I'm mindful that in the Easter season, the season where we celebrate resurrection, I'm mindful that we don't, we don't leave Lent behind. We don't leave heaviness and lamentation behind. Rather, when we proclaim resurrection, we, we do it not to ignore the heaviness and, and the realities of this world. It's just that as people of faith, we also proclaim that God is at work. We proclaim that God is at work, that God is with us, that God is especially with those who are suffering trouble, those who are oppressed, those who are pushed to the margins by the systems of this country and this world. We proclaim good news, not instead of trauma, not to ignore trauma, but rather we do believe in resurrection. We believe God is at work. So this Wednesday, I hope that you will hold on to that promise as you go about your day as you listen to the news, as you do work in your community, hold on to that promise that God is with you, that God is with us, that resurrection happens, even in the midst of such, such sadness, such trauma, we can proclaim hope and lamentation at the same time. That's what we're called to do. And that is what our ancestors in the faith have done for the centuries. That is what our scripture does. So for that reason, I'm going to close this devotion with a reading from Psalm 46. Psalm 46, hear the word of God. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdom shake. And the kingdoms shake. God speaks, and the earth melts away. 
The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will exalt among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. What does it mean to proclaim good news in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of trauma? 